The internet protocol allows two computers to exchange messages across a network that's built up out of many different link layers. It does so through addresses. An IP packet has a source and a destination address. Routers decide which link to forward a packet based on the packet's destination address. Let's look in detail what IP version 4 addresses look like, how they are formatted, and how they are allocated. The original goal of the internet protocol was to take many different networks and stitch them together. For this to work, the protocol needed a way to refer to a computer that was independent of the network it was on and was unique. So a computer on an IBM network and a computer connected over to a router over a serial line can talk to each other and need a way to address each other. Today, IPv4 addresses are a bit more complicated. They're not totally unique due to a bunch of special cases and uses, but for now, let's just assume that they're unique. An internet protocol version 4 address is 32 bits long. These 32 bits are often written as four octets, that is four 8-bit values, in the form a.b.c.d. Here are three examples, 171.64.64.64, 128.30.30.30.30, .64 .64 .64, and 12.22.58.30. Every device connected through IPv4 has an IPv4 address. The IP layer delivers packets whose destination is this address to that device. In addition to an address, a device typically also has something called a net mask. A net mask tells you which IP addresses are local, on the same link, on the same network, and which require going through an IP router. For example, a lot, think of a laptop on a wireless network. In order to send a packet to another device in the same wireless network, you don't need to go through an IP router. You can, in theory, just send the packet directly to the other device since it's in the same wireless network. A net mask is written as a string of consecutive ones, starting with the most significant bit. A net mask of 255.255.255.0, for example, means the first three octets are all ones. Two to the eighth minus one is 255. And the last octet is zero. This means that an IP address which masks the first three octets, 24 bits, of your IP address is on the same network. A net mask of 255.255.252.0 means that net mask is 22 bits long, while 255.128.0.0 is a 9-bit net mask. You can tell whether two computers are in the same network by taking a bitwise and of their addresses with the net mask. If the resulting addresses are equal, they are in the same network. Let's see what this looks like on my computer. I can open up a terminal and use the ifconfig program. My computer is connected to the internet over Wi-Fi, which happens to be the link named EN1. If we look inside the information for EN1, we can see that my internet protocol version 4 address is 192.168.0.106, and my net mask is 0xffffff00, which is hexadecimal for 255.255.255.0. This means that if I send an IP packet to an address beginning with 192.168.0, I should send it directly, but if it doesn't begin with 192.168.0, I need to send it through a router. Here's a quiz. For each source, destination, and net mask, mark whether the destination is in the same network as the source. Let's walk through the answers. The answer to the first row is no. They are in different networks. The two addresses differ in their second octet, 34 versus 35. If we take a bitwise end of the two addresses with the net mask, we get 128.34.0.0 and 128.35.0.0, which are not the same. The answer to the second row is yes. They are in the same network. If we take an at bitwise end of the two addresses with the net mask, we get 10.0.1.0 in both cases. The answer to the third row is no. They are not in the same network because they differ in their third octet. The source is in network 10.0.1.0 and the destination is in network 10.0.2.0. The answer to the fourth row is no. They are not in the same network. And with a net mask, the source address is 171.64.15.32 while the destination is 171.64.15.0. The answer to the final row is yes. They match in the first byte. Both are 171.0.0.0 when ended with a net mask. So how are IP addresses assigned? Originally, they were broken up into three classes, class A, class B, and class C. Each class separated an IP address into two parts, network and host. The network part of the address denoted an administrative domain such as MIT, BBN, or Stanford University. The host part of the address denoted which device on that network. Class A addresses had a leading zero, seven bits of network for 128 networks, and 24 bits of host, so a class A could cover 16 million computers. Class B addresses had 16 bits of host, so it could cover 65,536 computers. 
Class C addresses had 8 bits of host, so it could cover 256 computers. While classes A, B, and C are simple, we quickly found out they were not flexible enough. For example, both MIT and Stanford received one of the first Class A address blocks, over 4 million addresses. For a while, MIT would give each of its dorms the equivalent of a Class B, 65,000 addresses for a few hundred people at most. When IP addresses were plentiful, this wasn't a problem, but as their use increased, we needed a better allocation policy. Useful note, Stanford gave up its Class A block in 1999. MIT still has its. Today, IPv4 addresses are structured through something called CIDR, or Classless Interdomain Routing. Rather than have prefixes only of length 8, 16, and 24 bits, CIDR allows prefixes to be any number of bits. This means all CIDR prefixes define a block of addresses that is a power of 2 in size. When we talk about CIDR addresses, we refer to its net mask length. So for example, we talk about a slash 16, we mean a net mask of length 16. This CIDR block describes 2 to the 16th addresses, or 65,536 addresses. When we talk about a slash 20, we mean a net mask of length 20. This CIDR block describes 2 to the 12 addresses, or 4,096 addresses. CIDR blocks are how addresses are structured, addressed, and managed today. Today, Stanford has 5 slash 16 blocks, blocks, about 325,000 IPv4 addresses. So how are IPv4 addresses allocated and managed? There's an organization called IANA, or for the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. The ultimate authority is ICANN, the Internet Corporation for the Assignment of Names and Numbers. ICANN delegates the work to IANA. IANA gives out slash eights, describing 16 million addresses to regional internet registries called RIRs. Each continent has its own RIR. The RIR for the United States is ARIN, while the RIR for the Western Pacific is APNIC. These RIRs each have their own policy for how they break up the slash eights into smaller blocks of addresses and assign them to parties who need them. You might have read in the news that we've run out of IP addresses. This isn't true. There are many unused addresses today. What did happen is that IANA ran out of slash eights to give out, reached a special end case in its charter. When reduced to its last five slash eight blocks, IANA gave one slash eight to each RIR. Now address management and allocation is up to the RIRs. In 2012, John Peterson, who was then a member of the Internet Architecture Board, gave a talk at Stanford on some of the political, economic, and technical complications that this raises. This talk isn't required material for the course, but I recommend it highly, and you should be able to find it on the website. So now you've seen the structure of IPv4 addresses, how they're allocated, and how end hosts make their first hop routing decisions, that is, whether to send to a local node or to their gateway router. Addresses today are managed in terms of CIDR blocks, whose size is defined by their prefix length. A shorter prefix, say a slash 8, is a larger block than a longer prefix, say a slash 10.